Alright, welcome everybody to talk with GG Pasak. First episode in two fucking years with our guest host Coco. So something happened yesterday, something that no one thought was possible. But till we get there, I have to explain some other things. So we'll be looking at a market and this is gonna be the finished talk point. But First we have to get there, so I don't know how much you guys watched my trading streams and shit, but I'll just explain some things that you might know already or you might not. So there's a market manipulation called pump and dump in markets, mostly seen in crypto. Uh, so who traded crypto knows about this. Pump and dump is basically this, as you can see. Uh, we're taking Dogecoin as an example. It's a cryptocurrency that has literally zero value, except the memes. There is no value to it. And the reason why it's good for pump and dumps is exactly because it has no value. It's traded for very, very little amount of money. So the pumper, what he does is he buys it up. So let's take this for example. He's buying all this up. And when it gets here, all he needs to do is be either an influencer or have contact on influencers. Influencers are based probably not the ones you know from these days, like the big boobs girls and the fucking retards who do suicidal challenges and shit and get followers that way. These are influencers mostly from Twitter. They are giving financial advices and shit. So what happens here is they give the information to their friends like the other influencers, the influencers buy in. Some people notice they buy, but they put it, push it back down. And now what they do is they start spreading fake news. They say, oh my God, Dogecoin is doing this and this. The currency is going to be so fucking amazing, you know, like new technology and shit. And they share it on the Twitter and all the followers start buying in. And then the followers retweet it and their followers start buying in. But obviously at one point there is no one to buy anymore and the price just gets dumped all the way back down. While these people who bought here managed to sell a profit, the people who heard about it last are the ones who lose the money. And as you can see in Dogecoin it happened many many fucking times. It's actually incredible how many times they managed to pump and dump this shit coin. So let's pump and dump. This is illegal on big markets like US market and shit. It's not illegal in Bitcoin but or cryptocurrencies, but it is illegal in many markets. The second part we have to talk about is is shorts. Shorts and longs. So basically what you can do in markets is you can buy something or sell something without actually owning it. You basically lend the lend the contract or the stock or whatever or the coin. You lend it from the broker or exchange. And then you either short it, meaning sell it, or buy it, meaning buy it. So you, what you can do is you can lend Dogecoin at the top here and sell it without actually owning it, meaning you will make profit. To explain short to give a good example something you can imagine like shorts are very hard to understand if you're not if you're not experienced in markets so imagine your parents own a car right your parents own a car and they don't use it so what you do is you lend the car and sell it to someone so, but your parents tell you, we want the car back, meaning you will always have to buy the car back every time. So let's say you lend the car for $10,000 and you sell it for $10,000 to someone, right? So if everything goes to the plan, the car gets older, more broken and shit, and it will lose value, right? So let's say in five years, you buy the car back at $5,000. You give it back to your parents. And since you sold it for $10,000, you have $5,000 profit, even though the value of the car went down. 
obviously what can happen though is the guy who buys the car for ten thousand dollars suddenly decides to tune the car up like he adds nitro and basses for music and shit and he increases the value of the car to twenty thousand you are forced to buy it back you have to and the most important part is the money you have for the car to buy it back you can't use meaning that if you sell the car for $10,000, you can't use the $10,000 until you buy the car back. And obviously, that's the last part, you always have to cover the car. Meaning if the car suddenly has a value of $20,000, but you have only $19,000, you have to immediately buy it back at $19,000. You can't go into debt, you know? So that's short. Basically, you buy a contract, you sell it, and as long as you cover the value of the contract, you can keep making money on it going down. But if it goes up and you can no longer cover it, you make a loss. So why is this important? So what happened yesterday is something insane. As we said, pump and dumps are illegal, right? Because it's market manipulation. But a lot of markets yesterday, for example, GME, this is actual US market regulated where pump and dumps are illegal or Nokia, for example, is another one. A lot of, a lot of markets yesterday, but GME is the main one, went up. So how the fuck did this happen? So basically someone figured out a loophole. We all knew about this loophole. Every trader knew about this loophole, but what we thought was it was unexploitable. Meaning that the loophole is there, but no one can use it, so who cares? Like for example, you put a prisoner into jail and there's like a hole that leads to outside. The issue is the hole is like 50 meters deep. So if he goes in there, he just dies. So like the loophole is there, but he can't really use it. So who cares, right? Well, someone figured out how to use this loophole. So what happened is that someone figured out if he gets enough people to buy a stock, he can trigger the shorts made on the stock by hedge funds and force the hedge funds to go broke by them running out of money to cover the shorts and then they'll have to buy the stock back up at high price. The issue is, where do you get that money, right? I mean, you can't pump and dump, it's illegal. Well, this is not a pump and dump because it wasn't a market manipulation. He wasn't lying. What he said was, if all of you buy this stock and you all hold it, the hedge funds will have to buy back in their shorts and will all make profit. He wasn't lying. He said the truth. He didn't do some fake news about fucking GameStop. This is a dead stock. This stock has no value. He literally said the truth. Like, this is a huge, huge profit maker for big companies, like shorting, like... Basically, these big companies or hedge funds, they find a dead stock and they just short it forever and just make passive income because they know this stock will never go up because it already hit the peak, right? Like, there is nothing GameStop can do to expand their business. There is just no future for it. So they'll constantly make money on it. So it's like, hey, we know they're shorting it for insane amount of money. So it's just all us poor, poor people buy it up and make them make them go broke so they have to buy back in and take all their money to us it's brilliant he basically united all the poor people around the world to use their money together so the money is good is high enough so they can break through their shorts Meaning the hedge funds, they have a lot of money, right? So what they can do is keep selling. They can keep the pressure down. And if they beat the buyers, then they win. They can just stay up, keep on making money and everyone who bought in loses. But if you get enough people to buy in, this can happen. So what happened is basically everyone started buying in. The entire America, the entire Europe, the entire world of poor people or the poor traders, like it's the second wave of poor people, any people who have some disposable income, they all bought in. 
this shit stock went from $2 to $475. It's 250 x if we talk in gambling terms. It's actual insanity. So right now the rich people are going crazy. They're like, what the fuck? This is pump and dump. This is illegal. It's not. He didn't spread any fake news about it. He said, like, he basically declared a war against hedge fund managers. And now they have, like, basically three choices. A, they unite all the millionaires. And they get enough money to crush the buyers down. B, they bribe the politicians so they make this illegal. They turn this legal legal procedure into illegal procedure. Or C, they will have to give up on making free money from shorts. So right now the millionaires basically have to hedge. I mean, assuming they can't just crush the people with their own money, which might be impossible because like in millionaire world, there are there is one rule and the rule is you don't steal from millionaires. If you steal from millionaires, all the millionaires will fucking join in and crush you. This is just a no, no rule. You can't steal from the rich people. That is the only rule. There is no rule. The millionaires have to help each other. They don't. They love when other, other millionaires lose money. They love that, but they can't take their money. So like the odds of millionaires joining in to crush these buyers together is very little. So they have to basically now hedge because if they ban this, if they make this illegal, it will cause riots because this is not like most today's issues, like racists against black people matter, black, black lives matter, right? Or like, I don't know, right versus left, communism versus capitalism. Like it's always people in groups fighting each other. These are all the people together joining forces against the rich people. So if you ban this, if you take this option from the poor people, everyone will get pissed off. Like this could cause a civil war, a revolution around the world if they do that. The second option is they don't do that. And at that point, they can no longer make money on shorting, which is enormous losses for these people. And they have one more problem because there are millionaires that don't make money on this, on this shorting scheme. And these millionaires might not be, might not be very friendly. For example, this guy, Elon Musk. Here come the shorty apologists, give them no respect, get the shorty. You can't sell houses you don't own. You can't sell cars you don't own, but you can sell stocks you don't own. This is bullshit. Shorting is a scam, legal only for vestigial reasons. So even Elon Musk decided to pour oil into the fire and say, fuck these rich people, fucking destroy them. It's incredible. So this could literally, if this works out, this could make a lot of people rich and a lot of millionaires poor. Like this is the biggest saving of money from the rich to the poor in probably centuries or maybe even millennia. Like this is the smartest thing that was ever done. Now the question is, can these people hold or will they sell? That's the other part. Like, as you can see, this stock right now in pre-market is 341. Like, people are still buying this, even though it was originally two dollars. It's insanity. Like, the importance of this is massive. For people who don't trade, they might not understand how important this is, but this is the biggest turnaround in markets ever fucking made. Yes, uh, and you probably ask, so how much did the hedge fund manager lose on this, right? That's probably a good question. I can tell you how much. $80 billion. Just on this fucking stock. $80 billion. Just went from the rich to the poor. 
That's a lot of money. If you would count it on Americans, that's like $100 for every single American. You couldn't tell us sooner? I didn't know about this. I found about this yesterday. I had no idea this is happening. But I am thinking about joining in on the action on the next stocks that they're gonna decide to pump and dump. Well, pump. It's not even pump and dump. It's just pump. Pump like this. I am thinking about joining in. This is, is a huge huge point in history of money like massive so i recommend everyone to at least watch this if you don't want to join on this collection like it is super risky it is gambling basically you are gambling if you join in this so i recommend big caution this is not free money like we don't know what the rich people will do we don't know if the poor people manage to stay together but if they will, it will be glorious. This would be really insane. And we'll see if I join in on the action. I will study this on the weekend and see if there is some way I can still get in, even though late. Like, for example, don't buy this stock. Like, try to find the next one rather than buying this one. And that's it. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next talk with GG Passat.